Now Rainmetal is going to build the F-35 as well. Originally, the job was being done by Turkish Aerospace Industries, but Turkey was kicked out of the F-35 program by the US because it bought the Russian S-400 air defense system. Manufacturing of the F-35 within Turkey was also forced to stop. So Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Rainmetal negotiated with the intention of handing over the original Turkish task to Germany. Rainmetal's technology is already excellent, and with Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman sharing their technology, future production of the F-35 is sure to increase. In this video, we talk about F-35 production and the F-35 production line. It's important to note that while Lockheed Martin is the producer of the F-35, it takes hundreds of companies to build an F-35. After all, there are more than 300,000 parts in the F-35, and it would be impossible for one company alone to complete the entire process of developing and manufacturing it. F-35 part suppliers all over the world, such as Turkey, are responsible, along with Northrop Grumman, for building the same F-35 center fuselage, and Turkey, in addition to the United States, is responsible for the production of the F-35 fuselage center section. But Turkey bought Russia's S-400 air defense system, leading the United States to kick Turkey out of the F-35 program in 2019. Starting in 2020, the 1,005 parts that would have been produced by Turkish Aerospace Industries were instead produced by manufacturers from other countries. As a result of Turkey's withdrawal, one company, Northrop Grumman, needs to build three types of the F-35 center fuselages, the production capacity is totally inadequate to meet the needs. According to Lockheed Martin, the current order for the F-35 is about 175 units a year, but Northrop Grumman can only build 156 center fuselages a year, which affects the production capacity of the F-35. So the US negotiated with Rainmetal, and Northrop Grumman was prepared to transfer its current manufacturing technology to Rainmetal. But before that, Germany did not intend to join the F-35 program. Germany plans to skip the fifth-generation fighters and directly develop the sixth-generation fighters, so it cooperated with France and Spain in the future combat air system program. However, after the outbreak of the war in Russia and Ukraine, Germany is ready to strengthen its defense forces. At the end of May last year, the German government was approved by parliament to add 100 billion euros of special defense funds, of which the German Air Force contributed 40.9 billion euros. The Luftwaffe planned to purchase a number of F-35A as a transition model between the current Eurofighter Typhoon and FCAS programs. Since Germany ended up purchasing the F-35, the cooperation between the two sides is also going well. According to Rainmetal's plans, the two companies will be able to build a minimum of 400 center fuselages starting in 2025. With Rainmetal on board, the annual production of the F-35 will be greatly increased. However, it should be noted that there is a key point here, what they are manufacturing is the center fuselage. Typically, the manufacturing process for a warplane starts with the main beam and then slowly builds it up at the equipment stations on the assembly line. But not the F-35, which doesn't have a main beam in the usual sense. The F-35 is built by dividing the fighter into parts that are built by different companies. Once the parts are all built, Lockheed Martin then assembles them in a building block fashion. It's this highly automated, well-matched production model that has seen the F-35's production gradually rise. Meanwhile, on the production line of the F-35, each assembly station has several three-dimensional projectors that can project the information and position of the parts assembly according to the size of the fittings. This highly automated model not only increases production speed but also reduces assembly errors. It can be said that the F-35 production line is unique in the world. There are just three major production lines for the F-35, besides the United States, there are also those in Japan and Italy. The Lockheed Martin Marietta plant is responsible for final assembly, the Fort Worth plant is responsible for wing and fuselage assembly, and Northrop Grumman's Palmdale plant is responsible for the production of the center section of the fuselage. As for Japan and Italy, after all, they were outside the US and had different assembly and production techniques. One of them, in Japan's Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, mainly to meet the needs of Japan's own more than 100 F-35, is only responsible for assembly, all parts are shipped from the United States mainland, and it is not involved in the production of core technology. 
The other plant is in Carmeli, Italy, and is mainly responsible for the needs of the European region. This production line in Italy can not only produce the right parts by itself, but the assembly speed is also very fast. The production line is estimated to be able to become the US agent in Europe, and the assembled F-35 is shipped directly to the purchasing countries in Europe. The United States even plans to develop after-sales service on the F-35 production line in Italy, making it the maintenance center for the F-35 in Europe. In addition to this, BAE in the UK is responsible for fuselage and tail production. Although the US has established F-35 production lines in different parts of the world, the focus is on the US-based final assembly line. The assembly line is divided by Lockheed Martin into five work areas, from 0 to 4. Work area 0 is where the wing components are installed and their movement tested to form the overall component. Workspace 1 installs the six major components of the airplane, including the forward fuselage, center fuselage, rear fuselage, left and right wings, and tail section, as well as piping, cabling, and various functional systems. Work Area 2 installs the main landing gear, flooring, insulating blankets, substructural components, etc. Work Area 3 is responsible for the interior of the aircraft, including installing auxiliary power units and conducting preliminary tests on them. And hydraulics, landing gear retraction and release testing, avionics testing, and flight control testing are done in Work Area 4. As far as the process is concerned, the assembly of the F-35 is similar to building blocks, with the skeleton being the main focus and parts being added bit by bit. In the F-35 assembly process, the fuselage is the main focus, the nose, wings, tail, and other parts are put up one by one and then combined with various subsystems, such as the power system and electrical system. This is followed by the integration of sensors such as radar, navigation, communication systems, and, of course, weapon systems. The final stage is the comprehensive testing of the fighter jet, including ground and flight tests. If it passes the tests, the F-35 can be painted and coated and then delivered to the customer. It feels simple to say, but it's actually quite difficult. Northrop Grumman has previously stated that building the F-35 is a highly technical process. In manufacturing the fuselage of the F-35, Northrop Grumman needed to use robots and automated systems. Virtual 3D and projected automation are among the high-tech tools. The most interesting is the projection system that projects on the fuselage and tells the workers the order of installation and what tooling accessories are needed where. In addition to this, there is the pulse assembly line. Before we get to that, we need to know about the station-based assembly line and the flow assembly line. The traditional way of assembling an airplane is to park it in a stationary position, and then the workers complete their assembly tasks in sequence. Although this method is simple, it is time-consuming. If there are 1,000 processes in an airplane, there will be 1,000 workers lining up in order to assemble the airplane at the same fixed station. This is very cumbersome, and it is estimated that it takes half a month to assemble an airplane. As for the flow assembly line, although it is very common in the manufacturing industry, it is not possible in airplane manufacturing. For example, in the flow assembly line of automobile production, the automobile is assembled continuously while moving, and dozens of automobiles can be assembled in an hour. But the airplane parts are too many, the process is too complex, and we currently cannot do this. Pulse is a production line between fixed and flow, which is typically characterized by the fact that when the product is moving, no assembly operation is carried out, and when the assembly operation is carried out, the product does not move. For example, since the Boeing 787 is divided into five relatively fixed stations, the aircraft can be assembled at the same time on all five parts of the aircraft. When assembly is complete, the airplane is moved once, and the process is replicated. Although the efficiency of this method cannot catch up with the flow of the assembly line, at least the traditional station-based assembly line efficiency is much better. The first pulse assembly line was developed by Boeing and is now available at Airbus Group and Lockheed Martin. Overall, most of the assembly work on the F-35 assembly line is done by modern machinery and equipment, coupled with 3D virtual and projection technology. It is rare to see a large number of workers walking around on the assembly line, it is all highly automated robots, 
which not only saves manpower but also speeds up the production of the F-35. But even so, the manufactured F-35 is still not enough. From the public data, the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps alone have orders totaling nearly 2,500 units, and another dozen countries have ordered about 1,000 units. But Lockheed Martin delivered only 141 last year. Factor in the Ukraine war, foreign orders for the F-35 have skyrocketed. By U.S. estimates, final production of the F-35 could reach 6,000. Lockheed Martin's building one in two days is still too slow and totally inadequate. From 2011 to the present, total production of all three models of the F-35 is already on its way to surpassing 1,000 aircraft. Specifically, nine F-35 were produced in 2011, 29 in 2012, 35 in 2013, 36 in 2014, and production reached 45 in 2015. In 2016, 46 were produced, essentially the same as in 2015. And starting in 2017, F-35 production began to increase at a faster rate, reaching 66 aircraft that year. In 2018, it was 91 aircraft, and in 2019, it soared to 131. According to Lockheed Martin's original plan, production would peak in 2023, with annual deliveries reaching more than 170 aircraft. But the impact of COVID-19 on the supply chain ultimately saw production drop rather than increase. Lockheed Martin delivered a total of 123 F-35 in 2020, and Lockheed Martin and the F-35 assembly plants in Italy and Japan were all forced to shut down for half a year, with total production falling 24 units short of the original production of 147 units. In 2021, Lockheed Martin planned to produce 142 F-35, but in 2022, crashes and technical failures led Lockheed Martin to deliver only 141, a little less than the planned 148. Even so, the number of F-35 deliveries worldwide reached 894 by the end of 2022, with around 150 deliveries planned for 2023. By the end of this year, total F-35 production will be able to top 1,000 aircraft. It's just that there are more orders for the F-35, and a single contract is for hundreds of them. In January of this year, the F-35 Joint Program Office and Lockheed Martin signed a third order for 395 F-35. These hundreds of F-35 are being produced in three lots, with 145 planned for lot 15, 127 for lot 16, and 126 to be produced in lot 17. And the contract signed by Lockheed Martin in 2019 is not yet in production. Whenever the US buys F-35, the numbers basically start at a few hundred. The reason for buying so many at once is also very simple. To reduce the unit price of the F-35, the US military called it, block buy. For example, in 2019, after the signing of the first phase, the F-35A flyaway cost fell to $80 million. The latest batch of F-35 as is even cheaper at $70 million apiece. It is important to note that the flyaway cost does not include the cost of research and development, nor does it include the cost of supporting weapons, ammunition, training, or maintenance. This is a discounted price for the US military, and when the US military buys more, the corresponding training and maintenance costs will also be reduced. But for other countries that will not have this favorable situation, there must be other costs. Not only to purchase supporting weapons and ammunition but also to pay the personnel training costs, maintenance also has to be paid. So the price of the F-35A on the international market is expensive. For example, Germany spent 13 billion euros to purchase 35 F-35A, which, converted into US dollars, is $397 million a piece. This is in addition to the fact that Germany is not a partner country in the F-35 program and therefore needs to pay a high price, but also because Germany is using the F-35A to replace the Panavia Tornado as its own next-generation nuclear bomb-carrying fighter for launching B-61 nuclear bombs and has to do a separate nuclear bomb certification, so the price is ridiculously expensive. As for the upcoming 15th batch of F-35, the cost of the individual aircraft has also been increased a bit. The previous cost of the 15th batch was $65.6 million, which will go up to $69.9 million this time around, 
while the cost of the 16th batch will go down to $69.3 million, and finally, the cost of the 17th batch will go up again to $69.9 million. The reason for the price hike is also simple, the performance is going to be upgraded. Batch 15 of the F-35 will be upgraded to the TR-3, with a new integrated core processor, panoramic cockpit displays, and more. And in terms of air combat, the new batch of F-35 will use the new Sidekick Weapons mounting program, which will increase the number of AIM-120s carried in the internal weapons bay from 4 to 6. The plan is to test the program on a small scale on the F-35A, C and then fully roll it out in the 17th production batch. But according to the latest news, the TR-3 upgrade program for the F-35 should be delayed. It was intended to start in April, but as a result, it is expected to be implemented as early as December this year and may be delayed to April 2024 at the latest because of the significant schedule lag. As for the 17th batch of F-35, Lockheed Martin plans to upgrade them to Block 4 models. It will add maritime strike capability to the original F-35A Block 3 and install the APG-85 radar with gallium nitride modules to enhance electronic warfare capabilities. As for the future F-35, whether to install a variable cycle engine is still uncertain. In March, U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall said the Air Force could not afford the risk and expense of installing the variable cycle engine in the F-35 fleet on its own, so it plans to consider installing an improved version of the F-135 engine in subsequent batches of the F-35 Block 4. The cancellation of the adaptive engine transition program was a no-brainer. After all, the Air Force is the only one of the four branches of the U.S. military that needs AETP technology, and the Air Force can't afford to do it on its own. However, some of the new technologies developed in the AETP can be used in the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, so the Air Force is sure to continue research and development. As for the F-35, in the end, it is really hard to say. Overall, the annual production of the F-35 is already high around the world, it's just that although there is more production, there are more orders. After Turkey was kicked out of the F-35 program, the task of building the center fuselage was all taken up by Northrop Grumman, affecting some of the production. With Rainmetal on board, though, Lockheed Martin may have a chance to realize its previous plan of producing more than 170 aircraft per year.